Configuring Link Access Edge on vServ 4, Stage 6. We're going to enable external access for conferences. So go to External User Access, Access Edge Configuration, double click on Global, and Enable Anonymous User Access. Click Commit. Changes to the control panel get replicated to the Access Edge server. So give it about five minutes and then we want to restart the Access Edge service on vServe 4. We're going to enable Federation and Public IM as well. So I'm going to wait on restarting and we'll do it all at the end. We're now going to enable Federation. We're going to do that in particular with Office 365. Go to External Access Policy and enable Federation. Click Commit. Go to Access Edge Configuration. Go to Global. And enable Federate and enable Partner Domain Discovery. Click Commit. In earlier stages, we configured DNS for underscore SIP Federation TLS dot underscore TCP to direct to access.macroconnect.co. If you haven't done that, you need to do that now. Secondly, we need to allow port 5061 through the firewall going to 10.0.1.214, which is access.macroconnect.co. That step should also already be completed. Lastly, we're going to run a commandlet to set up Link Online as a Federation partner. So we're going to the Management Shell. And from the guide, we're going to type clipboard text. So it's got the proxy FQDN here, and we're enabling it, so we're going to hit it. And you can go back to the control panel and go to Provider, and you'll notice that it's set up. If you sign into an Office 365 account and go to the Link Online control panel, you're going to want to enable external communications here. Office 365 suggests that this might take up to 24 hours to take an effect. At that point, you're going to be able to communicate back and forth. Once the connection is set up, you can connect to people at Office 365. I have a dummy example here of kevin.morin at dummydomain.onmicrosoft.com. If that domain existed, and if this user existed, when you click here, you will be able to exchange phone calls and IMs, screen sharings, back and forth as though they were inside your organization. Closing on a link here. Uh, just like setting up anonymous conference calling, we need to restart the Access Edge service after waiting about five minutes after we've made changes here. So now we're going to enable access by public providers, and we're going to use AOL as our example. So we're going to the external access policy. And we're enabling public users. Hit commit. Then we're going to provider. Double clicking on AOL. Clicking enable. And clicking commit. Just like with federation and anonymous access, we need to restart the access edge service for this. And again, we have to wait five minutes before we do that. The last step in the key one, and this one can take up to a month to take an effect, is that we need to register our server with AOL. And to do that, we're going to go to http pick.link.com. In order to do this piece, you have to have a Microsoft Volume License Agreement, be part of the Microsoft Partner Network, be a service provider and have a licensing agreement, or have high volume services. So assuming you have one of those, you're going to sign in. Once you're signed in, I'm going to use the Microsoft Partner Network. Checking the box. So now you have to type in your partner number and hit submit. On the page that pops up, we're going to initiate service. We're going to populate the contact information and click next. We now want to populate our access edge information, our SIP domain information, and check AOL. Scroll down and over and click next. An error was returned because I forgot to hit the add. So we go over here and hit add and scroll down and over click click next a review page comes up click next and you'll get a confirmation page